Hello there. Welcome again to Food for Thought on Friday. I'm Tim Hadley. I'm glad to be able to be with you and glad you tuned in. Uh, we've been looking, uh, last time we were together, we looked at, we started looking at the signs that the Lord Jesus does in, in the Gospel of John. We were looking at the seven signs that he did. Signs are a tremendous thing that the Lord Jesus did to prove his authority and to demonstrate his authority and power uh, as from God. And when we look at these seven signs, they're different than miracles, but these seven signs give particular address to the fact that he was the eternal son of God. In fact, John in chapter 20, verse 30, he writes that these are the signs, these signs are given that you might believe that he is the son of God. And so these are the seven signs. And we want to look at the second of the seven. Here in John chapter four, we find this second one. In John chapter four, verse uh, 46 down to verse 54, we find that uh, Jesus, so Jesus came again to Canaan of Galilee, where he had made the water into wine. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. And when he had heard these, he had heard that Jesus had come out of Judea into Galilee. He went to him and implored him to come down and heal his son for he was at the point of death. Then Jesus said to him, unless you people see signs and wonders, you will by no means believe. And the nobleman said to him, sir, come down before my child dies. Jesus said to him, go your way, your son lives. So the man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him and he went his way. And as he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, told him, saying, your son lives. Then he inquired of them the hour when he got better. And they said to him, yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left him. So the father knew that it was at the same hour in which Jesus came to him. Your son lives. And when Jesus said to him, your son lives, and he said, uh, he himself believed and his whole household. This again is the second sign Jesus did when he had come out of Judea into Galilee. So here we have this second sign. And what this sign demonstrates for us is really... Uh, it, it, it shows us growing faith. And we see four steps of this growing faith. And, uh, and that's what we want to look at just briefly together uh, today. The first thing that we see is a crisis faith, uh, 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 a faith that is just beginning and it's, it's really a catapulted into existence because of a crisis in this man's Life And this man, we understand, travels about 20 miles uh, to, to beg or to implore the Lord Jesus Christ to, to help him. This man was desperate. His son was laying there sick. And uh, his son uh, was on the verge of death. And, uh, and this man was grasping at whatever he could. And what we find about Christ's faith, faith that is in crisis or faith that is catapulted into existence because of uh, a crisis is that a crisis faith is a desperate faith. And what we mean by that is that we see this man is grasping on to whatever hope he can and desperate people will, will pay any price. We know that from history. De desperate people will pay any price. They will uh, be willing to do any kind of procedure. Desperate people will, will pay that price. They will make any kind of promises that they can make. Um, they will go that umph mile uh, to the umph degree to be able uh, to perhaps get their crisis solved. And, uh, and, and one of the things we want to just say that concerning 
faith in the Lord Jesus Christ is that you don't have to go anywhere. You don't have to uh, do anything desperate. All you have to believe, do is believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. How wonderful that when we have crisis come in our life as believers and uh, when crisis do come, we don't have to go anywhere except on our knees to the throne of grace where we can find help in the time of need. And so we find that indeed, this man's faith was a, a desperate faith. This crisis faith was a desperate faith. But secondly, it, it was an absolute focused faith. And how good to know where to focus our attention. And this man focuses his attention upon the Lord Jesus Christ for this one specific thing, that his son would be made well. He had this urgent desire um, but uh, but one of the things that we see here is that he he does make a mistake in thinking that the Lord Jesus had to come to him. And what the Lord Jesus wanted to display to him was his sovereign uh, power, his control over every situation. And it's a good reminder for us that in uh, Christ's faith, which is a desperate faith and a focused faith, we have one who is sovereign over all. And the Lord Jesus um, would have this man to believe that, uh, that he is able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all that he would ask or think. This man thought um, that, he, that the Lord Jesus would have to, to go or it would be too late if he didn't get there. And But what we find is that the Lord Jesus said, Christ would say, go, your son is made well. And so this is the thing about this type of faith. Faith is born, faith that is born out of crisis is a faith that doesn't stop at anything. Uh, it doesn't just stop. It goes all the way and trusts the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we see this man's crisis faith but, you know, it, it develops into a confident faith. We look at verse 50, verse 50 here, and Jesus said to him, Go your way, your son lives. And what we read, the response of the man is, So the man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him and went his way. See, this man put his faith into action, and he believed and he went his way. And so we find this, this confident faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. And so we find that this man's confidence was in his Lord. And you know how easy it is in our life that we can take our eyes off of uh, the Lord Jesus Christ and we can have our eyes fixed on so many other things in this world. And the book of Proverbs would remind us in chapter 3, uh, the book of Proverbs would remind us in verse 5, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. And indeed, the Lord Jesus directed this man's path. So this man had a confident faith and his confident faith was a focused faith that was uh, uh, attached to the person of Christ and he was able to trust the Lord Jesus Christ and when he uh, would arrive home he would have a confirmed faith look at verse 52 when he inquired uh, when he arrived home he he found in verse 51 that as he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, your son lives. In verse 52, then he inquired of them the hour in which his son got better. And they said to him, yesterday at the seventh hour, and the fever left him. And this was confirming his faith. And how good of the Lord to confirm our faith when we exercise that faith and we um, move from being a crisis faith and our faith in the time of a crisis that we have this confident faith and rest 
on the Lord. Lean not to our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge him and allow him to direct our paths. How wonderful to see that the Lord confirms this man's faith and this miracle. Uh, it was a miracle of space. The Lord Jesus did not need to be present. And the Lord Jesus confirms this with, to this man. And it's a tremendous thing. But there's one more thing we want to see here. Not only was it a crisis faith or a, crisis, a faith that was developed because of a crisis in this man's life, and which reminds us that no matter what's going on in your life, you can trust the Lord. You can depend upon him today, no matter if it's in relationship with someone else or no matter if it's a circumstance in your life, no matter if it's a, uh, whatever it might be, we can trust the Lord in times of crisis. Secondly, we can have confidence in the Lord. We can rest totally upon him. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That's the confidence we can have in the Lord. And then thirdly, the Lord wants to confirm that faith. He wants to confirm your faith as you trust him. Uh, it's often been said that God is no man's debtor and that you cannot out uh, do God. You cannot outgive God. You cannot outtrust God. God is a God that can be depended upon. And so we find here this man had a confirmed faith, verse 52, and now he has a contagious faith. That faith is not something that he's going to keep to himself. So it says in verse 53, so the father knew that it was the same hour in which Jesus had said to him, your son lives. And he himself believed and his whole household. And so what an impact that this man had because the Lord Jesus Christ answered his faith. And the Lord Jesus Christ came in. This man exercised confident faith. This man was his faith was confirmed and his faith was contagious. It overspread to others. And uh, like the woman at the well, in her response to the Lord Jesus Christ, she went out and she went to the men and she said, come meet a man that told me all I ever did. And this is what uh, the Lord wants from us. He wants our faith to be contagious. He wants our faith not only to be confident in him, but he wants our faith to be contagious and spread to others today. And so as we uh, take this little a uh, portion of scripture, verses 46 to 54 of chapter 4 of John, we find here that the second sign really in, illustrates these four steps of a growing faith. And may your faith today be a confident faith, and may your faith be a contagious faith for the glory of the Lord. May he bless you and strengthen you and cause his face to shine upon you as you trust him for whatever you might be facing uh, this day and this weekend. For his namesake.